when we looked at the South Mountain Freeway, and we were organizing all the information in the economic impact section of the environmental impact statement into a cash flow diagram, we had the benefit of tables of detailed analysis. They reported for us impacts from construction, impacts from design. These are all economic impacts from land acquisition and from maintenance. That allowed us to report on the upfront costs of the project. And in public works projects, typically there are large upfront costs and long-term benefits. In the South Mountain Freeway report, it talked about how the land acquisition could reduce property taxes collected. It could reduce sales taxes collected. And it gave us estimates of all of this information going up for 15 years. It also gave us an estimate of the reduced traffic congestion that would result from the new freeway. And this, in monetary terms, reduced traffic congestion in the units of hours of reduced delays multiplied by about $19.20 an hour gave us an estimate of the benefits of the new highway versus the construction, land acquisition, and tax implications of the highway. And we could analyze the return on investment. The Tempe Streetcar is a much smaller project. The South Mountain Freeway is about $2 billion. And here's the Tempe Streetcar, $192.4 million. Construction, utilities, right-of-way acquisition, design, management, and vehicles. The vehicles, in this case, are the trolley cars that run in the street. The difference between the light rail and the Tempe Streetcar is the light rail has its own right-of-way, but a streetcar will sometimes run down the middle of the street. And the train cars themselves, well, they cost a lot of money compared to the highway where you don't buy the vehicles. Those are private. So here in the streetcar project, we're spending almost $200 million. It's one-tenth the size of the South Mountain Freeway project. And the environmental impact statement doesn't include the same detail in analysis of economic impacts. I've extracted from the appendix on economic impacts, you can see the URL of the address where we find this, I've extracted from that appendix with the economic impacts, the one paragraph that gives us any kind of numbers about what we might expect the benefits to be. We're going to get the costs from here. 192 million. And when we're going to represent that time costs, that's one big arrow down. Notice that maintenance is missing. And it behooves you to, when doing this cash flow analysis, to somehow find a source for estimating maintenance cost. because we won't find it in the economic impact report. This is all that we will find. A sustained investment in transit has the potential to generate an increase of 2 million in business output and 0 0.8 million in personal income for every 10 million invested. Well, all right, let's say that the 10 million that we're invest, how many tens are we investing? Well, we're investing 20 of them. 20 times 2 million in business output would be 40 million a year in business output. That's just this calculation. 20 times 0 0.8 million a year is going to equal 1.6 million a year in income. So this is biz output and this is income. These estimates are based upon a study that is now two decades old and took place in a community that isn't comparable to Tempe, but they're the only numbers that we have. 
the question is, how would we translate the $40 million a year in business output and the $1.6 million a year in income into something analogous to what we did for the South Mountain Freeway? We could, for example, say one of the benefits will be increased sales taxes. $40 million a year times whatever the sales tax rate might be a good estimate of the increased sales taxes that result from the increased biz output that we would expect from the sustained investment in transit. Same thing with the income. 1.6 million, let's say increased income taxes. 1.6 million times whatever an average tax rate might give us an estimate of the benefits that accrue to increased income. Let's take a look at the rest of the information we're provided with. In the long run, during year 20, and civil engineering works are long-term projects, these benefits increase to 31. So we could do some new math from 2 million in business output to 31 million in business output over 20 years and from 0 0.8 million to 18 million. That means that the cash flow diagram, whatever we calculate in the beginning, by the time we get to year 20, these two benefits together are going to be much larger. We can recalculate them for year 20 and make some kind of assumption about the growth rate. Is it straight? Is it exponential? And that assumption is just a guesstimate, but it allows us to go forward with the analysis and take a look at what these benefits might be. If you're impressed by a 15 times increase in the benefits in 20 years, then you share my sentiment. This type of growth from the immediate to what they call the long term, I find extraordinary. But we're going to run with the numbers that Valley Metro has published in the economic impact. It's also estimated that every $10 million in capital investment, that's the same, okay, yields $30 million in increased business sales. And that every $10 million, mm -hmm, $32 million in... At this point, I don't know how this bullet point is any different than the other two. It, this one comes with the citation, and I'd assumed that these two first bullet points were also addressed in the citation. It's worth checking. $30 million in increased business sales or $32 million in increased business sales. We don't know. It looks like they're adding some additional estimates to these earlier numbers as a way of sort of boosting the credibility of what appears to be a pretty poor job of economic analysis. The task before us is to translate this massive investment and these spread out benefits into what's called an ROI, return on investment. And we are going to make a simplifying assumption because the economic impact report does not address it. We are going to assume that these maintenance and operating expenses, the jobs for the people who are going to police and operate the cars, the maintenance of the tracks, we're going to make an assumption that these are exactly equal to the revenues generated. I expect that it will, we'll have to buy tickets to ride the streetcar that those tickets will result in an annual revenue and that's going to be exactly equal to operation and maintenance. That simplifying assumption allows this analysis to proceed. Draw your cash flow diagram representing the increase in sales tax and the increase in income tax spread out over 20 years. Compare that to the design, construction, land acquisition costs of the Tempe Street car and report back your results.